Manny Molina says, what's the best defense or response when defending the position that hell is not a present place, but instead a future place? Thank you, Pastor Mike, for your ministry. So Manny, uh, for, let me explain. What, what, this is this is apparently a very contentious issue. I had a short that came out that's where I said, hey, uh, no one's in hell right now. And, and people, some people in the comments, and it was a short, so it's easy to misunderstand these little clips taken out of context. It's very easy to misunderstand them. I'm sorry. We, we learn as we go on how to make these shorts. And sometimes I've, I've made them and thought, yeah, that didn't really say what I thought it was saying because you didn't see the full context. Um, but this caused some people to be really concerned and think, hey, are you saying, are you like thinking everybody goes to heaven <laughs> or something like that? Um, <clears throat> biblically speaking, there's different words used talking about afterlife locations, right? So you have like Gehenna, Abuso. You have these different places. And Hades is one of them. Hades, we're not talking about Greek mythology here. We're talking about the, the Greek term and the biblical usage of the place called Hades. And I take Hades to be, and you can look and it seems consistent in scripture. Hades is where dead people would go, uh, basically since, since Christ's resurrection, where unsaved dead people will go for like a temporary holding location. This would be like being in jail versus being in prison. Jail is a temporary lockup prison is a long-term lockup. Um, so Hades is like that temporary thing. In Revelation, when you look at when Hades, and, and this is in the Greek, it says Hades. Not all translations do this. Some make it even worse because they'll, they'll translate, hell is cast into the lake of fire. But it doesn't say that. It says Hades, not, not, not hell and not these other terms. So when Hades is cast into the lake of fire, at the end of Revelation, the final judgment, I take the lake of fire to refer to hell. It's my understanding of it. And people are free to try to work this out differently. But what I would say is um, maybe maybe it's best not to say uh, no one's in hell right now. Uh, maybe it's better to say people are in Hades right now. And one day they'll be in the lake of fire. But these aren't the same location. And and so I, I, would, I would say Hades and hell are different things. And that's how we should consider them. And say, yeah, hell is a final judgment location. Hades is a temporary holding place until final judgment. And before the death of Christ, it seems that lots of people, good and bad, were in Hades, in different areas of Hades. One was an area of comfort. Another one was an area of, of unpleasantness, you know, torment, uh, you might say. And Jesus talks about this in his parable of Lazarus and the rich man. All right, but then after his death and resurrection, he took those who were waiting on the Messiah into the presence of God, waiting for final judgment to happen. That'd be my understanding of it. I, I don't know if that's going to help Manny. I, I didn't realize how pe much in my own experience, I put a little clip out on this and I was like, man, people got really, it just, it gets, got confused real quick. Not my intention, but I do think it's true that no one's in hell right now, depending on how you define the word hell, I think, which then I think the biblical meaning of it would be more. Yeah. Older translations and a lot of translations are, are sloppy. They'll, they'll translate these different Greek words in ways that confuse people. So it, it can be challenging. All right, we do have a bonus question for today. Brittany Howard says, can you explain the meaning of need the need more garlic shirt you were wearing a few weeks ago? Thanks and God bless you, Pastor Mike. Uh, well, thank you, Brittany. Uh, well, you see, garlic is a spiritual symbol for the Holy Spirit. And just as garlic should invade all foods, making them better, making them richer, making them tasty, so the Holy Spirit, should, no, actually, it's just, here's the truth about my shirts. I don't buy these shirts. This cat with glasses, my wife buys my shirts. When we first got married, we would go shopping together, right? And I'd go to the men's section, she'd go to the women's, we'd pick different clothes. And then she would, she would like go with me because she's better at this picking clothes stuff. After a while, I was just like, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? And I would just get what she liked. And then after a while, she started going alone and I didn't even go shopping and she would just buy clothes for me. And then she'd be like, what do you think of this? Or she'd send me pictures, this one, this one. I was like, yeah, great. I'll just study. You go shopping. That's perfect for me. Um, and now I will, it's gotten to the point now after many years of marriage where I just walk into my closet to put clothes on and there's a new shirt there and it says need more garlic. And I go, okay, I'll put it on. My wife just buys shirts. So we should, I like the shirts she buys. She buys fun shirts and cool shirts, and it's better than I would pick, and I don't want to be bothered looking for clothes. That's the truth. There you go, Brittany. 
That was so important. I'm glad that you guys were able to learn to think biblically about my shirts. Um, yeah. All right. But I will be with you guys um, for sure two weeks from today. For now, every other Friday, temporarily, while I'm still getting back up to speed, I'm still not back up to speed with, with my, my health and my ability to study and stuff. So I just need to take it a bit easy. Um, appreciate your prayers. The Lord will heal me in his time, which I, I hope and pray is very soon. <laughs> and otherwise, been great to be with you. I'll see you in two weeks. Other than that, I'll put up some like short type thing videos going on and I'm working. I'm not even working on it really, but the next two videos in the women in ministry series, and then we're done. Uh, I'm not really able to work much on it at the moment, but I will be once my ability to do that improves. <laughs> so, so yeah, I love y'all. Thank you very much. I, I have nothing else to say. I'm, you know, I'm just lingering because it's been so long since I've done a stream with you. I'm enjoying it. And I, I wish I, I had more opportunity to do this, but we'll get there. All right. You take care. Oh, I was going to pray. I didn't forget. Um, Lord God, we just thank you so much for your holy word. We are all just students and your, your word is our, our teacher. We pray that you would lead and guide us by the scriptures. Help us to be those who in living our daily lives, we're about to do something, about to say something, about to decide something where scripture just comes to our hearts and minds, that we would be guided by your word where we're about to talk to someone or counsel with someone and your word just enters into our hearts and minds so that we'll be people who are practically day by day guided by scripture so that when we correct, we immediately think of how to do it with gentleness and respect. Or when we're about to speak, we think to be slow to speak. We think of Proverbs to guide and direct us. We pray that we would just be a people of scripture, understanding theology and practice in just daily life in a biblical way. In Jesus name. Amen.